through our mission concerning the fate of every single world of our infinite multiverse. Hello friends, my name is Stevie Cade and welcome to Film Trigger. Okay, everything, everywhere, all at once, just released. I've been very curious to see this movie, uh, but before we dive into the actual review of it, if you could hit that thumbs up button, that subscribe button, and the little bell ding thing so you get notified every time I upload a new video. Without further ado, let's dive into my review for everything, everywhere, all at once. This movie is based around the character Evelyn, whose failure at life, her marriage, her business, her family, all comes to a halt when she is approached by her husband, who is actually her husband, in a different universe, and learns that the entire fabric of reality is about to come apart, and she is the only hope to saving the multiverse. I'm not your husband. I'm another version of I'm from another universe. I'm here because we need your help. Very busy today, a whole time to help you. It sounds insane, and let, let me clarify, it's fucking insane. So with that, let's dive into what I like about this film. Which is pretty much all of it. I'm just gonna put that out right now. There's not much I don't like about this movie. I will say, it's not gonna be for everyone, and it's rated R for a reason, so parents, be careful taking the little ones to this one, okay? But I love the core value that this movie is trying to represent. The concept that all your failures, everything you've messed up in your entire life lead to a greater purpose. A greater purpose that you can see come to fruition if you take a leap of faith and attempt the unimaginable. Sometimes if you take that leap of faith, it will pay off. This film is so outrageously entertaining, yet controlled. It's very self-aware in the sense that even through the entirety of madness that you're witnessing, the audience doesn't get lost. And there were parts that I was confused, but I was confused because they wanted me to be confused because my investment hadn't paid off yet. And that's one thing this movie does great and is it pays off your investments for sure. This movie tugs at all the emotions and sometimes all at once, like the title suggests. The use of the multiverse opens up this door to this film changing its genre in very extreme ways. At some points in time, it's a rom-com. Other times, it's a martial arts movie. Other moments, it's an uplifting family drama. And then it will spin around and turn into a vulgar comedy. And I mean, vulgar <laughs> comedy. Listen, okay, this is a spoiler-free review, okay? But I am gonna just let you in this little nugget. It's not really spoilery to the concept, but it does happen in the movie. You don't see it in the trailer. But just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about when I say vulgar comedy, at one point in time in this movie, somebody's doing a straight cannonball onto a butt plug on purpose. Yeah, that's what this movie does sometimes. And it even takes the time to nod at a Pixar movie in a way that you can't even imagine. You can sit and fathom a Pixar movie. How's this movie gonna nod to a Pixar movie without being too on the nose? Well, this movie is fucking on the nose with it, but you, you're you not gonna believe you're watching it happen. You're not gonna believe you're watching this play out and that you feel for it and that you're invested in it and you're curious about it and you're laughing about it and you're crying about it and you're... Jesus Christ, this movie is fucking insane. You literally can't predict anything in this movie. There was multiple times where I'm like, mm, I bet this is gonna happen. And then, nope. But as I said, this movie pays off your emotional investments. What makes this movie fun is those moments of guessing and being curious and looking at the screen in complete shock and then laughing because of the same fucking reason. The dopamine chemicals in my head are just fucking flying right now. Like thinking about this movie makes me so happy. This is what going to the movies should feel like. The cast and characters, my God, Michelle Yeoh, why aren't you a household name? I know you had some success in the early 2000s, but then like, I haven't really heard much about you. Listen, we have to pay more attention to people in this movie and the movies that they produce because this is a stellar cast. Michelle Yeoh's acting is so natural and compelling. If you thought James McAvoy and Split was an Oscar-worthy performance, then you haven't seen anything yet. Michelle Yeoh, we literally see her playing many different versions of herself and not just different versions of herself, but sometimes those versions are kind of merged with other versions. So you 
get this weird duality, but it's very beautiful to watch. Her character, Evelyn, that we get at the end of this movie is completely different than the character that she starts off to be. And you get to see her go through this very whimsical, very wild, very unique journey to get to where she ends up by the end of this movie. And it's not just her. This goes for everybody in this movie. All characters have their own version, character development. And another one of those characters is Evelyn's husband, played by Jonathan Kwan. We don't see him develop in the same way that we see Evelyn develop. We see her develop because she's traveling into many different universes. She's taking little bits and pieces of different versions of herself, and that ultimately becomes who she is at the end of this movie. But his character actually develops slowly in front of you by not jumping into different territories. You actually get to see the true nature of his character develop through Evelyn's eyes. She's relearning who her husband is by visiting other versions of him in different universes. Very beautifully done. And Jonathan K. Kwan, if you don't know, I'm sure you probably heard about it now. He played Short Round in Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. He also played uh, Data in the movie Goonies. And then we never really saw him again because he retired from acting because he didn't think Asians had good representation in Hollywood and there were no good roles for Asians unless you were in like a Kung Fu movie or something. I don't disagree with why he left. Uh, it's very disappointing. It, it makes me look at myself a little differently. Like, man, what could I do to, to change this? Because I'll tell you what, man, I, we need more of him in movies. His acting is out of this world. And speaking of stellar performances, Jamie Lee Curtis is in this movie. And listen, if you think she's starting to age out of the business, she totally proves you wrong. She brings her A-game. Uh, this is a very physically demanding role. And again, just like Michelle Yeoh's character, we see her play different versions of herself. We, she gets to stretch those acting muscles. Sometimes she's a villain. Sometimes she's a lover. Sometimes she's a fighter. And sometimes she's just an IRS agent. <laughs> Jamie Lee Curtis did such a good job that if you go back and watch my trailer reaction for this movie, it took me a moment to actually recognize that was Jamie Lee Curtis. She was so immersed into this role. She looks kind of frumpy and just like... Mrs. Wang, are you with us? It does not look good. God damn it. I wish I was doing spoilers, but I know if I did spoilers, you guys wouldn't listen to this video and you wouldn't go see this movie. So I'm doing my best to keep you interested enough to go watch this movie now in theaters. Run to the theaters and go see it. And the same can be said for the rest of the cast. Stephanie Hsu, who I never heard of before. I don't recognize her from anything else. Maybe somebody will bring up, oh, she was in this movie. And I'll be like, okay, I remember her now. But like for the most part, when she was introduced, I, I didn't know who she was. And she... She did a wonderful job. She's actually one of the main characters of this movie in a way that I'm not going to explain to you right now because spoilers, but I'm definitely going to keep my eye open for her to be in other roles. I think this movie is going to open a lot of doors for her and I'm looking forward to what types of roles that she chooses because I really like what she did in this film. Again, like a lot of characters, just did many different versions of herself. Just how dramatic those emotional changes are for those characters. The acting game has to be very high in this movie and everybody delivered. And that brings me to James Hong. James Hong is 93 years old, acts like a 93 year old, what you expect a 93 year old for like most of the movie, and then comes out and doesn't act like a 93 year old at all. Very vigorous and just out of the left field. You're like, holy shit. What the, okay, okay, he's doing that now. All right. He's still bringing his A-game to the big screen, and you deserve to go see his A-game on the big screen. The creative styles of this movie are just very outlandish. They're vibrant. They're over the top. Everything in this movie is over the top, but it's not in a baity sort of way. It's actually very earned because the story sets it up to be earned. We are introduced to a world where anything and everything is possible, and they exploit that. I mean, you got hot dogs for fingers, sex toys being used as weapons, but somehow this movie manages to also have a huge heart. My friend that was with me, she was crying. She was crying because she related with one of the storylines that Evelyn was going through and then immediately turned around and was laughing her head off because of the ridiculous nature of this movie. It weaves you in and out of these emotional states and it does it so well. Like There's certain times where I was laughing but I felt bad for laughing because there's actually a detrimental thing that's happening. Also, while this really funny thing is also happening. So, like, <laughs> this movie just, it tugs it, tugs at all strings. We as an audience should demand more movies like this. 
Actually, we as an audience should support movies like this so they make movies like this and the movies that get made like this get a release that they deserve. I mean, we live in a world where a garbage dumpster fire of a movie like Morbius is out on every screen in the world while this fucking masterpiece, yeah, I said it, masterpiece, is struggling to, to make it out into a worldwide release. What? Why? I don't understand. Actually, you know what? Maybe I do understand. It's the audience's fault. We have told the studios it's okay to put out pulp crap and we'll, we'll leave these artsy films for streaming or something and I'll check it out if I have time. That's not how this should work. Movies like this deserve a chance and it's our responsibility to make sure they do. So do you need to see this movie in theaters? No. Should you see this movie in theaters? Absolutely. fucking lutely Go out and support this movie because number one, you're going to love it. You're going to have a great time with this film. And number two, you're going to support more movies like this to be made. When it comes to what I'm on the fence about and what I don't like about this movie, and I've only done this one other time in any review that I've ever done, and I regret it when I did it, but I don't think I'm going to regret it with this one. I don't, I don't really have anything that I'm on the fence about or don't like about this movie, at least not right now. As I said, my dopamine hits are firing like crazy right now because this movie was so good. It was a breath of fresh air. You know, if there's one thing, one thing that I can nitpick about this movie, it maybe it's runtime. Maybe it's runtime was just a little too long. Or I wouldn't even say too long. Maybe it could be like 20 minutes shorter. That's that's all. That's all I really have. This movie is wonderful, and the fact that it doesn't have a wide release at the moment is a problem. But it's a problem that we can fix. Go see this movie. And for all these reasons, I'm giving this movie the A-est of A's, the plus A's of plus, an A+. Plus. That was wonderful! Bravo! I loved that! That was great! There you have it, guys. There's my review for Everything Everywhere All at Once. Do you think I'm being a little too hypey about this? Maybe I am. I don't know. Maybe you will when you go see it. Maybe you have seen it and you love it just as much as I do. Or maybe you don't like this movie. Maybe you think this movie is pretentious. Maybe you think this movie was way overdone. There's way too much going on. If so, let me know in the comments below. Let's start a discussion. I really want to know why you feel that way. What what didn't hit for you if it didn't hit? Or if you loved it, let me know that too. And we can just sit and giggle about this movie all we want in the comments below. Also, please be sure to check out some more of my videos. And as always, stay trigger happy, my friends. Peace. I am really good. I don't believe you. Wow, that was really good.